Hey, Pronosters, Bruce from Printavo. I wanted to give you guys some insight into a presentation that I give at all the conferences, um, something that people normally have to just pay to join these conferences. But honestly, I wanted everybody to be able to hear this and be able to use it, especially as the new year's coming up. Although if you're listening to this in 2022, then well, whatever, you could still be able to apply it. And this is all about sales. I want to give 10 different tips and best practices that we see some of the best shops that do sales to be able to give to you, to be able to implement into your day-to-day business, whether you have sales reps, whether you don't have sales reps, everything in between. These are things that you can pluck, you can pick and choose what can apply, uh, but they're really, really great. And we've, we've done a lot of coaching internally with our team on the sales end as well. And I, I'm just combining all of it together into one piece here. So I'm going to share my screen with this because it's going to go into depth. It's going to have a lot of outlines and some visuals that you guys can be able to follow along. But if you're listening on the podcast, that's fine too. You'll, you'll be more than good and uh, you can pick it up later. All right. So just to preface this whole presentation, I like to ask where everybody is generally at shop wise. Most of the time that are at trade shows that are joining this presentation, they either have no sales reps or one sales rep. And they're looking just to be able to refine their process. They're looking to be able to improve and and be able to do things better than they know how. I remember when we hired our third sales rep at Printavo, we got to a point where I said, I feel like I've done as much as I possibly can with what I know personally about sales. We need a professional to come in here to be able to get us up, ratchet us up to the next level. And these are some of the things that we learned. And the other thing that I I really emphasize is to keep in mind is that through all of this, you are the subject matter expert and the master in this space. And you should treat it as such. Your customers come to you, they find you on Yelp or Google or get a referral because you did an incredible job somewhere or got a great review and somebody found you and wants to be able to work with you as the expert in this space. Let's go ahead and get rolling. Company size actually really, really matters, at least from a perception perspective. And what I mean there is that people don't generally want to do business with a company that they feel is too small. And what this means, though, is that you need to be able to act a lot bigger than you are. And this look of professionalism makes potential customers and leads feel comfortable with you. It it means means that you are saying the words we when you talk about it in my team and you have a really nice website and some great professional pictures taken. Um, things that really make you look like you are a 10 person team if you're only one or two or a hundred if you're 15 to 20, right? It's something we've always done at Printavo as well because, you know, people are going to trust us to run their business. They don't want to do it generally with a, a one to two person team. Now, granted, we're almost a 30 person team today at the end of uh, 2021 here, but these are things that you want to be able to do and exemplify on your site, on your social pages, and your on your uh, review pages and everything to be able to get those jobs. Look, when you go to look at a Yelp page to find dinner for tonight, if you see somebody, a restaurant that has a two and a half star rating, maybe you'll go, maybe you'll not, but you're going to make a pretty quick snap judgment here to say, are they going to be a good tasty spot that I want to spend an hour, hour and a half at, or should I look for somewhere else? And you're just going to keep cruising through. And that's what a lot of leads and potential leads are, are going to be judging you based on. And so you want to have that big person that, that very positive outlook of a, of a company profile. Now, some things that you can do on your website to be able to help though, uh, you know, set up your website if you haven't yet and you're not using some professional looking uh, website builder. Squarespace is a great, highly recommended one. A lot of shops use it. Uh, add some really good social proof. Social proof is essentially when you see uh, a website that has um, different copy on it or logos or graphics that make it look bigger because they're referencing bigger brands or bigger numbers, then that makes you feel good and comfortable. Here's a good example. What are the brands that you work with? 
Gildan, Under Armour, Nike, that looks good. What are some companies locally that everybody would know about, a high school potentially, or a larger company in the area that you've worked with? Put those on the website. Um, How many orders maybe have you done in this past year? Write that down, or maybe the amount of shirts that you've printed on. Those are good numbers that make potential leads feel comfortable with you guys. And then, of course, always have clean business cards. One way we grew organically ways before social media was we had postcards all the time and we dropped them off everywhere. That and a combination of email together, we'd send that out regularly. Every week we would do all these drops um, with like a 5%, 10% off your first order. And that drove a ton of new sales. But the nice business card, something that's easy to write on, not the shiny ones, not a dark one, something that's really, really nice and clean. Uh, You just never know where you're going to meet people. The number two way of of thinking about sales that's very low cost and actually free is just plain email marketing. I mean, email marketing is going to be such a big, big driver for you in 10 years ago and now and in 10 years into the future. And you can get started with a tool just like MailChimp.com, which you'll see here on the screen. Uh, But every new customer that comes in, you got to be grabbing their email. And that needs to be a process that cannot be forgotten and has to be collected because so much of your sales are going to come from repeat sales for your account reps and just from you getting started as well. So grab that information, record it, whether you use Printavo, whether you're using any other system, you got to have it in there. And it needs to be then exported into your MailChimp or whatever email marketing, constant contact, whatever you use. This is so important because you're going to keep collecting these. If you're running e-commerce stores, more emails. If you belong to a club, get those emails from the members. All of this together, you're going to send out regular updates. Well, what do you need to be able to send, right? Well, number one... Again, emphasis on regularity. Sending out once whenever you think of it isn't that great. It doesn't have consistency. It doesn't keep you top of mind with your end customers. So send these regularly. A monthly one is good. Um, Quarterly is okay. You know, the thing is, is that the customers you work with are very busy, just like you. So you got to stay top of mind. And, And email is a great, very low cost way of being able to do that. So send out a a coupon code to get people started. Some new jobs or things that you've been working on recently. Any news that's local that pertains to different business owners that you may work with or schools that you may work with. Keep it interesting, right? I I, I really shy away from just sending uh, cool shirts that you just printed, but really things that can pertain to their life. And here's a bonus, right? A bonus is, is if you can segment that customer list from, say, corporate, maybe to small business, maybe from schools, and send very relevant information, you'll get a much higher response rate. People will be more interactive with those emails because it pertains to their life. All right, the next step is speed. So the easiest way to add value to jobs and be able to show off your value and not be picking at the bottom of the barrel of pricing is speed. You know, I'm sure everybody's had a problem that's come up with their home or their apartment and they needed to find somebody on Yelp like a repairman. There's so many times, right, where you'll be able to search for people and you'll send out maybe three, four, five, uh, quote requests via Yelp. And a lot of times you end up doing business with just the first person that responds. Why? Well, because they look professional. They got back to you quickly. You're looking right then, which means you have the time then. And it's valuable. That speed that they gave and sent to and, and offered to you is valuable and it feels good and you end up working with them. You have a much higher close rate adding speed as a part of the equation. To a point where internally in Printava, we actually measure this. We measure it in our tool called Zendesk where we say, what is the response rate? And we try to target a median of 15 minutes or less. So that's really aggressive. But I'll tell you, it it adds a lot of value to your customers because it makes them feel good and it creates this wow aspect. Like, holy cow. You know, a lot of people don't expect you to respond that fast and you're beating the expectations. So respond to those quotes fast. Um, Get back to customers quickly. Instill this in your team so that this is a part of your core culture. And that is a really great low-cost way of delivering immediate value. Now, 
here's another one that's that's a big big one here, and that we're so uh, prone. When I was running a, a screen printing shop back in college, when we got quote requests that came in, we'd send a quote out and we move on. Right. I'm sure that sounds familiar. You just create it out, you send it, you move on because you're busy and you got 18 other things going on at the same time. Well, this quote and hope aspect is just not helpful, right? We really close sales by following up. They're busy. You're busy. You got to be able to follow up to be able to get that deal. And can you imagine if you get a couple more orders a month, on an average sale of maybe $300, $500 an order, what does that mean at the end of the year? It can add up. It can add up to be a lot. So make sure you follow up. And this is what in sales we call a, quote, pipeline. Now, a pipeline is a way that you can track, and you can see this in the, in the PowerPoint here, you can track jobs as they go from stage to stage. You can do this in Printavo by seeing that, quote, pipeline as you go from quote status to quote status to quote status, which could be follow-up one, follow-up two, follow-up three, and so on as they go through that pipeline. And even more so, you can see the dollars that you're leaving in each stage. And a bonus is create some lost reasons. Why did you lose that quote? Now, this is hard to do when it's just you because you're so busy. But when you've got a team that you're building, have them be able to mark that off. This is incredible to look at at the, at the month end or quarter end. Hey, guys, how many dollars in quotes have we lost? I guarantee you'll be shocked at the amount of hundreds of thousands of dollars that were lost and just moved on from. But not only that, how do we act on these to be able to close 5% more of them, 10% more of them, right? It could be really interesting to be able to dissect that, break it down and be able to create action to dive in and close more of those sales. Here's a good example of an email that you can send back. The more relevant, the better. You can template these out to make it better for your team. But hey, did you receive our last uh, approval email? We want to be able to get your job done on time. And you'll need to get this approved ASAP to help move it forward. Right? Make it personal. Make it to them. Work where they're working. If they're big on texting, text them. If they're from Instagram, Instagram them. If they're on email, email them. Is this hard to keep up with all the sales channels? Absolutely. But if they matter to your customers in closing deals, that's the new game. And that's where you got to be at to be able to play it. I view, especially at Printavo, and this is why we're doing things like this PowerPoint and content marketing and all the podcasts and helpful content uh, that we make, is that the best types of marketing are just being helpful to your customers. If you are helping your customers, you are going to create a wide net of potential people that are going to come in at some point when they're ready and that you are going to be able to be right there uh, because they're going to trust you, right? You've been helping them. Maybe it takes six months. I mean, we personally hear Printavo people listen to the content for months and months before they're able to funnel in and either afford Printavo or just ready for it. This is what I believe is very helpful marketing. It's content marketing. And all it is is being helpful to who your customers, your target customers are, whether it's collegiate sales, high school sales, corporate sales, um, startups, whatever it is in between there. How can you be able to help them make their jobs easier? For example, it's corporate. You know, we just placed uh, we just placed a big holiday order for a team, a bunch of gift boxes and things that we sent out. Well, I had to really think about what should I be sending out to everybody? What could have been helpful though is give me two options, maybe a blog post that I could find of nice corporate options, fun corporate options, not the standard ones like a mug and you know some pens and stuff. Something interesting that I can take a look at. And maybe even a one-click buy, you know. Hey, what is the quantity, which is the number of employees, and uh maybe the price per item? Maybe it's like $150 and that includes a shirt jacket and blanket, something like that, right? It could be pretty interesting to be able to, now, does that work in scale? No, but maybe up to, you know, 50 people, it works well. And I can really be able to understand, oh, wow, they, they work with corporate swag quite a bit and I'm going to trust them and go with this vendor. This is also great content that you can work on. An intern can help you with during the summer and you can use this to drip out into your email marketing too. All right, 80% of your sales are most likely over time going to come from your existing customers. This is what happens with every business. Uh, 
it's important to check in on them and not just to check in to be able to, to generate another sale, but a check in to be able to ask, Hey, how, How's business doing? How are you doing? What what are problems? Or maybe send them lunch. Just something nice to be able to to offer them without asking for anything in return, right? This is going to be able to build that relationship and create a strong bond. And strong bonds are important because it allows you to charge more than the competition. It takes you out of being the lowest price option and puts you into a bucket where people will pay for your exceptional service. So add value by giving them more of your time, by sending them things that are thoughtful, that are meaningful to them. Uh, and you'll really be able to create that personal bond. Cause I'll tell you what, things are going to always go well. You know, Printavo could be down, right? What's going to happen? Are we going to have that bond with our shops with you guys or not? You are going to miss a potential due date. Well, what's going to happen, right? Think about that, create that special bond there. Now, when thinking about the full sale for your account managers, your sales reps, or just you if you're selling still, bring a huge amount of transparency to the order. This is with good or bad. And we'll start with the bad first. If the, if the order is going and running behind, let them know. Build that extra connection, right? Show that you're on top of it. It's okay if it's going bad. They're not going to be pleased, but they're going to feel way better that you're on top of it and that you know and let them know than surprising them later and they just get it in late. Also, be able to really showcase what is the order process going to look like. Too many shops will just take in an order and then the customer doesn't hear from you for the next two weeks. Well, that creates a funky customer experience, especially when people buy so much on Amazon from their phone nowadays and they get regular updates. Use email notifications or automations. In Printavo, we've got all that set up that you can use, but set this up so the customer keeps getting notifications so they know what's going on and they get a heads up and so they feel good knowing that things are moving forward. This also creates that wow experience, right? The wow experience is gifts, it's it's speed, it's just picking up the phone. <laughs> I'm shocked when I give so many different shops a call and, and can't even get anybody on the phone. This is just a missed opportunity, but it's such a low bar for people to answer the phone nowadays that you can actually be able to beat customer expectations and that's when you create that wow experience. All right, cross-sell versus upsells here. I'm sure you guys think about this, but it's really good to be able to hammer into the process. Always be thinking about how can I be able to drive more value to the customer? If it's a brand, maybe they want a better quality garment. Uh, you know, instead of just buying a throwaway t-shirt, maybe upgrade to a nice tri blend. Um, if it's somebody that, uh, needs, you know, individual shipping, pitch that. That could be an extra dollar plus shipping if they need bag and tag. If they maybe want stickers that can be thrown in and included into each individual package, that's another great idea too um, and can be used as a really good cross-sell. The cross-sell versus upsell discussion always depends on the personalization of the order. You have to really think on your toes and be able to drag in examples to your sales team. You know, the best way of doing this, though, is creating a playbook. So for each type of customer that you guys normally deal with, create a playbook for easy upsell and cross-sell opportunities for your sales team to be able to take and use again and again and again. Second to last here is just ask for business. Ask for the clothes. Ask for referrals. If people enjoyed working with you, hey, do you happen to know of somebody else that I could work with um, that uh, you could email intro me to? I'd really love to be able to help and it'll help us continue to be able to grow. You'll be surprised. Most people will say, yeah, sure, and not really do anything, but maybe that 5% will, and that 5% could add to the bottom line, which adds up over the year. Make it part of the sales process. You could even automate it as part of when the job is closed. It'll send them an email to ask them for a review and for an email introduction. And then the last step, obviously, you know, this is kind of a no brainer, but hiring your first rep, if you don't have a sales rep yet, hire your first sales rep. I find that the best combination is create a base and commission model where somebody feels comfortable on the base, but is motivated to hit the commission based model. Start simple though. Start really, really simple with a smaller percentage of gross sales. And then you can back into net sales once you start to understand your margin more. 
But the sales rep has to truly understand what are they going to make on this job when they type it up very quickly. If they have to think about it too much, it demotivates them to be able to close that sale. So make it very simple and say that, hey, look, every quarter we're going to reevaluate this commission and we're going to figure it out together. I want to make you successful. I want you to be able to make money and we're going to do this together. And that's what we've been able to do and we're constantly changing it. You're never going to be able to nail a commission on the first try, the 10th try. It's always iterating and changing depending on how your business operates and what size your company is. Well, I hope that helps you guys. These are a ton of different tips that we find so many shops use over at Printavo. Um, You know, we'll be able to keep sharing these over time as well. Thank you, pronouncers. If you've got questions, drop them down in the comments below, or if you've learned something, definitely drop them down below. We'd love to be able to hear it. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.